photograph is neither taken nor sized by force. It offers itself up. It is the photo that takes you. One must not take photos. The Frenchman artist Henri Cartier-Bresson will be our inspirational guide into a contemplative approach to street photography. He had an adventurous life. He was a great traveler and had an enormous influence on the history of photography and not only in the history of photography. In our limited amount of time, I would like to highlight two of his most significant traits. The fact that he was attracted by the Zen tradition and the fact that he is considered the master of the decisive moment. One of the books that Henri Cartier-Bresson appreciated the most is Zen in the Art of Archery by Eugene Harrigan. And in a famous quote by Cartier-Bresson, when he says that to photograph is to put on the same line of sight the head, the eye, and the heart, we can surely read the influence of this book and the Zen vision of life. So, for our photographer, the mental process of taking a picture wasn't the most important phase. What was important was getting in contact with his real self, with uh, his being, unifying head, eye, and heart. We could also say mind, body, and spirit. And getting in contact in a meaningful relationship with reality and the world itself. Working this way, he could then recognize and capture the decisive moment. The decisive moment is that moment that explains and reveals something that goes beyond what we see. The moment in which all the components of a picture are significantly related to each other. The moment in which the subject, the color or the colors, the forms, shapes, composition, light, are where and how they should be. One might think that to do street photography is just walk in the streets and be lucky that something happens that a good street photographer is a quick recorder of a situation, a sort of quick cowboy that had success if he is the quickest to shoot. This might be one way to approach street photography. Another way, and today we would like to focus on this way in particular, is to stay with the situation as it is and wait. For the decisive moment. What I mean is that we could try to find a place that has certain characteristics which one of us can explore his neighborhood and the peculiarity of it and try to understand it, try to understand this place and find a way to interpret it and patiently wait for the combination that gives meaning to that scene. We are basically trying to be open to the magnificence of life. That's also what we do when we meditate. We sit, we repeat our mantra in order to reach a condition of 
openness that might welcome a gift, something that's not in our hands or in our control, called in some traditions contemplation. Now let's have a look uh, at some examples of photographs from Henri Cartier-Bresson. In this very famous picture, I imagine that the author had a sort of enlightenment. He probably saw the sinuous form of the stairs, he recognized the simplicity of the scene, just a staircase, a street. He probably considered the straight lines, comparing them with the curves and the bend of the street, and then waited for something magical to happen. Probably before this cyclist, many pedestrians passed, or maybe a dog, or a car, maybe either cyclists too. And he probably tried different pictures and solutions. And I also imagine that when he pressed the shutter button to take this picture, he felt immediately that this, and only this, was the decisive moment that was giving sense and meaning to those lines, forms and peace of life. Another example can be seen with this image. How many hours had our photographer to wait before this coincidence could happen? Isn't this way of being a photographer comparable to a certain extent to our practice of meditation? We wait for hours, minutes, days, sometimes weeks, or even an entire life before that an instant could give a meaning to all the time spent sitting on our meditation pillow. But that moment is decisive and magical and at the same time. I dare to say that in this picture, Henri Cartier-Bresson managed to depict beautifully an aspect of Greece. Even without reading the title of this image, we all could say that this was taken in Greece. Thomas Merton, one of our contemplative guides in contemplative photography, wrote in his book New Seeds of Contemplation, Faith is a communion with God's own light and truth. Faith goes beyond words and formulas and brings us the light of God himself. So, as meditators, we can count not only on a greater clarity of mind and on a different kind of attention thanks to our brain's neuroplasticity, but we can also experience more happiness and compassion when being on a street, practicing street photography in a contemplative way, in a faithful way. As Thomas Merton said, our faith is fundamentally a communion with God's own light and truth. And I personally can say that when I spend an hour or so wandering around the city, focusing on some photographic, photographic exercises, then through the exposure of life itself, I can also experience a sort of inner peace and a kind of love towards my fellow citizens. By slowing down 
our pace, we can make ourselves aware of different things and situations and focus on relationships and behaviors between men themselves, between men and animals, between men and the city. The common place that we share with others in a sometimes difficult relationship. And even when you are witnessing moments of tension, moments of difficulties, thanks to a different way of view them, you are loving your neighbors nevertheless. Thomas Merton again wrote, faith is the opening of an inward eye, the eye of the heart, to be filled with the presence of divine light. In fact, Thomas Merton experienced a strong moment of enlightenment, a revelation, not when he was in the middle of the woods, but right in the middle of a city. <laughs>